Spy family, or spy X family, or how my Asian upbringing has caused me to look at every X shape as a multiplication sign for a spy times family, kept revolving around the anime world like how Kim Kardashian's sex tape did among teenage boys a decade ago. But instead of this show being the grainy, shitty video that you saw on the hub, Spy X Family is created by two elite studios, Wit and Cloverworks, to create a visually stunning, crisp sounding piece of work that could be argued as a masterpiece. Slice of life shows are usually lacking in terms of animation quality, but we see beautifully choreographed fights and even the coveted camera trailing technique that Wit Studios took the world by storm when they animated the first three seasons of Attack on Titan. Of course, there will always be the waves of fucking virgin haters who call everything overrated just like how they did to Attack on Titan, Jujutsu Kaisen, and basically every other show that gives people happiness. However, Spy X Family listened to the overrated chance and hit one out of the fucking ballpark with their combination of a unique plot, setting, artwork, and most importantly, creating the perfect characters to satisfy everyone's palate. We have our ultra giga chat Lloyd Forger, a super sexualized waifu, Lord Briar, and the ultimate mean face compilation Anya, who isn't sexualized. Good on the directors for realizing that romanticizing a 5 year old girl isn't very ethical. Seriously, I heard that Japan has been having an aging population problem, but one look at Anya and people will be downloading Tinder and constantly swiping right to make babies. But a show can't just make it to the top of everyone's list with only cute scenes, it's actually how they nail the family dynamics of comedy and wholesome vibes to create a mood positive enough to cure cancer. The characters' relationships with each other were executed perfectly, and this allowed the show to do the unthinkable. They somehow managed to create two top-tier best girl candidates without having to create a harm competition between them and the protagonist. Of course, the main reason was that having a man in his mid-twenties being sexually attracted to his five-year-old quote-unquote daughter would be a little bit sketchy. But the other reason being that Anya plays her role as a daughter while Yor acts as a mother to perfection. Seeing these two interact with Lloyd made me want to have a family. But first, I need to get a fucking girlfriend. I don't even have standards anymore, bro. All she needs to be is a law. Wow, I just realized this intro has been very horny with some sprinkles of pedophilia. Let me backtrack a little and briefly describe the story for those who haven't watched it. The show appears to be set in the 60s and 70s with the vintage clothing, cars, and the very traditional view of man and woman societal roles, very oh. reminiscent of the James, James Bond, Bond era. We follow our super cool protagonist Lloyd, who is a spy called Twilight, and is famously regarded as the greatest spy in the world who can disguise himself and even imitate the voice of anyone. Yeah, like, I don't know, anime logic? He is tasked to infiltrate an Estonian city called Berlin, however he is in for a surprise because he is expected to find a waifu, marry and impregnate her, then raise a 6 year old kid all in just 7 days. Impossible, right? Like no way. Come on, what the fuck dude? I can't, I can't even get, get a, girl a girl to reply to my text, and this dude seriously went from having sex with a rich villain's daughter, to being single, then marrying a 10 out of 10, and raising a non-romanticized lolly. Jeez, Lloyd makes Kirito Goss somehow look like a major pussy. So anyway, Lloyd adopts a girl named Anya who enjoys eating peanuts and is also a telepath. Eventually, they encounter the waifu named Yor who works as a clerk at City Hall, but is secretly a gruesome assassin called the Thorn Princess, who is very clueless and awkward. Now what makes this ridiculous premise work is the authenticity and beauty of the characters who all tackle the situation at hand in their own unique way. It's really important to describe our three main characters because if we look at their backgrounds then this show would probably be a dramatic soft fest. Lloyd was a war orphan who could never got to experience a proper childhood because he lost both his home and parents at a young age. Anya was rigorously experimented by ruthless scientists, which scarred her to never reveal her real telepathic identity to anyone in fear of being abandoned once again. And finally, Yor had to become a child assassin to support her little brother when her parents died. The incorporation of comedy and life family elements to mask the edginess and gruesome massacre to morph and become a wholesome show is honestly quite brilliant. The show doesn't introduce anything that is mind-blowing, and I personally thought the pacing significantly slowed down after the first couple of episodes, but I didn't care, because the show utilizes simple elements brilliantly, like how the 2022 best boy and best girl are very similar, hot, and super badass, which contrasts so many other slice of life shows with a quiet, dull protagonist who is introduced to a perfect, outgoing waifu. Marin, I still love you, and I want you to have my babies. 
The tragic upbringing of our characters doesn't swamp their personality, but instead, it actually gives them some depth and even realism if you can believe it. Our protagonist continuously tries to keep his cool composure and repeatedly tells himself that he doesn't want a family in episode 1, but later, we find him looking at a group of young kids hanging out with a sad face reminiscing about the childhood that he never had. He's not looking at them in a pedophilic way, but deep down, he feels a deep desire to give Anya the comfort and care that he had never received. Lloyd might be a stud who could solo Saitama because he managed to kill a mosquito where Saitama couldn't, but seeing Twilight battle the fake identity that he set for himself depicts his growth as a person, and most importantly, the parent of Anya, also known as Starlight Anya. Not only can she eradicate your crippling depression, but she is a telepath who is the ultimate wingman, who chanted a heartwarming soliloquy in front of Lloyd and Yor to cuff them together. Damn it, Anya, I need you to help me out too. But what makes Anya stand out from the other cute anime kids is that although she grew up in a heartless environment and was burdened with the expectation to bring world peace, she's still a kid and acts like one. She's curious about the world, picky with her food, and cries whenever she doesn't get what she wants. She isn't a godly kid who can solve the interstellar gravity equation or whatever, and Spyx's family does so with all of their characters. We see Becky, who runs her mouth without a filter, Bazooka Bill, who eradicates the fear of giving steroids to your infants, proving that anything is possible. And of course, Damien. It's not only a male tsundere, but he's a masochist because he enjoys being falcon punch and having people smirk at him. He activated shoujo mode and now sees Anya as a goddess. What a fucking simp. But the funny part is that even though Anya can read minds, she'll likely have to perform an inception-esque dive in Damien's mind to pass through the multiple layers of gates, masking his fetish for girls dominating him. Something is fundamentally wrong with these kids, bro. The characters are perfectly written, but it's how they come together and build upon each other that propels the show forward. Initially, both Lloyd and Yor agree to start their pseudo family for their own secret intentions, Lloyd for his world peace mission, and Yor not wanting to be accused of being a witch or spy or whatever it was, both hiding a side of themselves. But as the show progresses, we see that they begin doing what every good parent should always do, put their kid first no matter what. Lloyd was always training Anya to be a higher class girl for the success of his mission, but he makes sure to never overburden her, illustrating the birth and development of his fatherly love. His mind says one thing, but his body acts on its own, impeding his own judgement. This is also true to how he views Yor. The first part of season 1 never really delved into their relationship, even though we all know that they will eventually get together. But we do witness some distrust and hesitancy between them, which troubles Anya greatly. And sad Anya means angry fans and you don't want to see us angry. But we see the perfect example of a crazy ex stalking, bugging, and manipulating a person. Oh, but when Lloyd does this, it's cute and passionate. But when I do it, I get the cops called on me. <laughs> I've never seen a woman. Talk about fucking double standards, bud. But your selflessness and wanting to work for other people's happiness are illuminated in various scenes throughout the show. At first, I thought Yor was just a simple clickbait sex magnet, but I realized that she's... Hmm. I mean, she kind of actually is just that. She brutally chops up bad guys in a tight seductive dress, gets so wasted after a single cup of wine that she could throw hands with drunken fist Rock Lee, and goes god mode whenever someone tells her, you're not best girl. What the fuck did you say, bitch? The characters are so damn lovable that it's easy to forget that they come from really messed up backgrounds. They're individually confident and powerful, but they really need each other to accept reality to become whole once again. Although the show never signifies the series' atmosphere, it is always lurking in the background to give the audience a break from the comedic humor and action. And occasionally, all the elements mix together and we see the barrier between family and pseudo-cover identity crumble down and we realize that this group consisting of troubled individuals have overcome massive odds to create something that is beautiful within their war-torn world. Lloyd is finally experiencing genuine familial love, you're discovering the existence of joy outside of her dark, killing world, and Anya, being raised by people who care about her instead of lusting only for her power. In only 12 episodes, Wit Studios and Cloverworks have managed to incorporate relatable emotions in a continuing and likely long-running manga. Part 2 of the first season is expected to come out in October 2022, and I'm very excited to tune in to watch and experience more Anya memes, Lloyd being a hot dad, and your daydreaming about how to look even more sexy massacring dozens of men. Spyx Family has been a massive success, and I will be praying every night for both studios to continue animating the series, and most importantly, not fuck it up. Thank <laughs> you.
Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. Comment down below what you thought about Spike's family, positive or negative. Remember to like and subscribe to support your boy and I'll see you all next time.